Hi all. Uh, welcome to Platform Corn 2023. My name is Jaydev Goswami. I work as a senior enterprise uh, solutions architect in AWS. And today I'm going to show you how you can detect and report on drift uh, in a multi-account, multi-region infrastructure, which is usually the case uh, in most of the, um, the bigger enterprises. And uh, they basically have this constant challenge where everything is deployed as infrastructure as code, but certain times because of uh, things like a P1 incident or some of the teams that are, that are not really um, up to speed up to speed speed with the infrastructure as code code um, you end up uh, with uh, having drift which then causes security incidents because you have a drift which is basically the difference that in, evolves between your your cloud infrastructure and your IAC configuration right um, so today I'm going to show you how this drift can be both detected and and I'll, I'll sort of talk about how to actually uh, report on that, but in a multi-account, multi-region infrastructure. Uh, so this is again a blog. I'll, I'll share a, a, a QR code at the at the end of it, which you can scan and and I then and sort of get, go straight to the blog. But for the for the time being, I'll just give you a brief overview. This actually takes forty five minutes to complete, forty five minutes to an hour. We have listed down the prerequisites. So some of them are you need the Python code. You need um, AWS CLI, you need Terraform. This is based on Terraform. Um, and we have a detailed walkthrough. Uh, so for today, given the time constraints, I will start at basically running a, a baseline scan. The infrastructure that I've deployed today is um, the blog talks about two accounts and four regions in total. But given the time constraint, I'm going to focus on one account and two regions. And if we have time, I'll go and show you what happens in the third region, which is um, not going to be massively different. We will just do a scan and then um, get get the run the Python code, which is going to bring together these uh, various uh, Terraform state files and co collate the entire drift into a tabular format. Uh, so let's run run through this uh, one by one. So like I said, I've already deployed the infrastructure, which is a EC2 instance in uh, US East one and US West one, right? Uh, we will we we have the code on our Git repository, so you can obviously go and have a look and have a detailed look at our repo. But today we are going to focus on the US East one, account A, US East one, and US West one. Okay, so let's uh, basically run a baseline uh, scan. So this code basically scans your um, uh, Terraform state file and then reports on what is there and isn't there uh, in terms of management of, of Terraform. Now, you will notice that there are a few things which are not managed by Terraform. You will see that when the list comes out. That is because when in our internal AWS accounts, there are a few things that are automatically applied, again, due to security reasons, which are obviously not, uh, won't be available in my uh, Terraform code. So it will say I'm not managing that. But Drift Ignore and Drift CTL, which is the actual uh, tool running behind the, uh, the, the scans, actually has a way of ignoring um, certain Terraform state uh, el elements if you want to sort of say, look, these were done manually. I don't want to worry about them. I know what those uh, drifts are, so I want to put them in an ignore file. Can I do it? Yes, the answer is yes. You can absolutely do that using drift ignore um, command, uh, which is, again, uh, available on the drift CTL website. So you have a drift ignore generator and you have a drift ignore command as well. Both are allowing you to actually ignore certain things that you don't want in your scan. Okay, so as you can see, there are 71 resources not managed by Terraform, which is basically uh, saying that these are the things that were done before my IAC was or the GitHub repo was implemented and they are not currently being managed. Right. <clears throat> and this has actually created two output files. So let me quickly show you that. Um, so this is basically uh, showing you the 
output file. It has an HTML, which I will um, show you. Let me put, put that HTML on the screen because it, it actually gives you a very nice visual HTML to have a look at. So this is a list of all the end manage report um, and the result in an HTML file, which you will get by running these commands. So the last command, if you pay attention, it actually scans and it outputs into an HTML. It also creates a JSON file. So we have done JSON and HTML. Um, so you can have a scan report in HTML or JSON format. OK, um, so let's now do the same thing for the second account. And we will see the sort of the results of it um, in the second account. The, and then we will probably walk into, I will sort of ignore because we don't have the time. Uh, so we will ignore that. And then we will jump into creating the um, summary report, which basically shows you what are the um, current statuses of all these scans. Because remember, it has scanned one account, two regions, and now you want to see a collated report, right? Because you don't want to go in individual reports and find out what the scan uh, results are or the drift results are. <clears throat> Imagine you are managing an estate of 1,000 AWS accounts. You can't be uh, you can't be going into each individual account to find out what the drift is. So you need a way to collate this. And we have created this Python script, which actually collates everything and shows it to you in a tabular format. OK, so let's see what the status of the command is. Cool. So it has run. Now I'll run the Python code, and it will show you the results in a tabular format. Let that run. And OK, cool. So as you can see, so there are no resources found in Terraform state, but missing in the cloud provider. We have resources not managed by Terraform, like I said, because we have certain things that get implemented. And there are six resources currently managed by Terraform. So let's now quickly move into introducing some drift in those two accounts that we see. So this command will basically add a tag to the original estate that I've deployed, which was an EC2 instance. Um, so let me do that. And let me also stop the instance, uh, which was deployed in the second region. OK. <clears throat> so as you can see, the instance is stopped on region 1, uh, or, and the instance has a new Another instance in another region has a new um, uh, sort of tag added. So we have introduced drift. But now in the next set of commands, what I'll show you is when you run the command again, you will see I'm going to check and, and, and try and ignore the things that I don't want to be included. So for that, we have created this command line, which makes use of the drift ignore flag that you see over here. And it creates the drift ignore file, which is a system file dot drift ignore. OK, in the path where you have the Terraform state file and it will create that drift ignore uh, file and it will append everything that you want uh, ignored, which is basically everything I uh, don't want to be managed by Terraform. OK, so this takes a bit of time, uh, as you can see, and I will let it run for a bit. And we can have a look at, uh, yeah, we can have a look at the other command. So in the blog, we are also sort of adding a security group um, in the uh, drift when you want to introduce. We're introducing a, a security group to this instance implemented in account B. And we have uh, a terminating, uh, we are terminating an instance which was running in account B's second region, right? <clears throat> uh, so obviously, if you're following this uh, blog uh, end to end, it will take you 45 minutes. And this is what it will uh, show you step by step. And it will allow you to actually get used to how to use uh, Drift Ignore and use the Drift CTL commands in order to 
um, identify the risk in a multi-cloud, multi, sorry, multi-account, multi-region um, setup. Okay, so now if you notice, this says zero resources are not managed by uh, my by Terraform, which basically means it has ignored everything that I do not want it to be uh, managed by. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm de deliberately ignoring something that is uh, not relevant for me. So that's how you basically use these commands to ignore everything uh, that you don't want. Uh, so be careful because. Uh, you don't want to ignore something that is crucial for your uh, actual uh, uh, running estate. Okay, um, let's go to the second one and let's do the same thing. We are going to ignore and we are going to ensure that it actually <clears throat> um, sort of uh, reruns the drift scan with the ignore flag now. Um, so on the second region of account number one. Okay. Uh, whilst that's running, let me bring up the thing. You can pause the video over here. I will keep the video, uh, the presentation over here. So you can scan this uh, QR code in order to go straight to our blog and uh, obviously run these uh, run through the blog end to end and identify what can be done by yourself um, in your own lab okay let me go back and show you so i'll keep it there for the next next 10 15 seconds whilst the command is running in the background Okay. Even here, you can see zero resources are managed by or not managed by Terraform. So it has successfully ignored everything <clears throat> and it has basically uh, created a drift ignore file which if you are on mac you can do uh, sort of command shift and full stop and you will see the drift ignore uh, file which is a system file to verify whether it has actually created that or not um, so in this after we have done that you could Again, because of the paucity of time, I'm not going to show, but you can go and do a detailed flag, which will show you a result in a detailed fashion. And it will show you the region with which has the drift. It will show you the account IDs where the drift has been shown. And it will show you the path of the Terraform state file or the JSON file, result file, where that drift was detected. So if imagine if you have a thousand accounts you run this on a daily basis or a weekly basis, depending upon how severe or how uh, focused you want to be in your assessment. You can actually run this uh, integrated with your CI CD pipeline and consume something uh, like you know Amazon event, event Bridge to invoke the Drift CTL commands on a regular schedule and send these reports out to your CCOE. If you have a CCOE, you can send this out to them and say, look, this is the drift that we have. Can we start working on that? So you have a multi-region, multi-account uh, uh, sort of setup where the drift detection is not a second thought. It's actually ingrained within your DevOps process. So I hope you guys have uh, uh, sort of found this useful and you might uh, sort of be, uh, you might now be aware of how this can uh, help you to drift detect the drift and sort of report on it. And we have given some pointers about uh, how you can actually integrate this with your uh, overall CI CD pipeline. So please uh, go to our blog and have a look. Um, and I hope you have a wonderful time enjoying other videos of PlatformCon 2020 through 2023, sorry. Bye.